on since you ask we uh we're live and just wanted to just welcome everybody and we want to just kind of break down some of these walls right these barriers i, I don't think that a lot of folks really are scared everybody. um of church i think they're I, I don't think they're scared of god i think they're scared of church and i think we've got to we've got to remove We've got to remove the the walls, right? We got to remove some of these things. So tonight, we just want to talk a little bit about Pharisees, what they are, what's hurting the church, what's keeping young people from church, what's keeping men from church, what's keeping you from church. You know, maybe what maybe you go to church and you're like, yeah, I go, but I go because I love the Lord that much. But if it, if it wasn't for God, I sure wouldn't be there, right? Some of that's sometimes that's our testimony too. Like, psh, it ain't the people I'm going for. Is 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 my relationship with God? So. Let's just talk through some of this stuff. And, you know, I've got Brother Jamie Bell and I've got Pastor Pipkin back both on here. And I'm not as good a moderator as the two of them, but I, I, I'm just honored to be in the presence of greatness. These, these brothers here are doing more than just talking the talk. They're walking the walk. They're in their communities. They're connecting with the people in their communities. They're not only praying, but they're also working in their communities. And I think we need a little bit more of that right? If we want to be believers, we should be out letting our light shine so other people can see what God looks like in his excellence. And these two brothers are doing it. So we're going to kind of go into this a little bit, but want to give them some space. If any, anything y'all want to say before we get started. Yeah, I just want to personally, man, just thank you and uh, Faith Connection Ministries for allowing me to come and partake with you today and this evening and have this discussion, this you ask discussion, man, as we continue to be open be vulnerable and be honest about our relationship, man, because that's what God wants us to do, man. So I thank you and your ministry for allowing this platform so people can really ask questions and really get an understanding to gain that relationship. So salute to you, brother. I appreciate you for having me on tonight. God bless you. And before Pastor Pipkin speaks, I want to I want everybody to understand something about what we're trying to do. All three of us are part of different churches. Y'all understand we're all we're, it's not about recruiting people away. It's not about one church against another. It's about three brothers just trying to open the doors so y'all can understand how good God is. We're just trying to bust open some doors and, and and let people see the unadulterated truth of how good God is instead of all this other mess that's coming to the church. So, Pastor Pipkin, it's on you. I'm going to get out the way. Go ahead. No, man. I just uh, repeat what Brother Jamie said. I'm excited about, about being on. Thank you for having me. Uh, both of you guys, I consider family. You're my brothers. I'm honored to share the platform and uh, anything I can do to help out. I'm really on here just taking notes, man, from two of the, you know, to the two of the maestros of their field. So, hey, I, I'm just sitting back. I'm waiting to hear my name. That's all. All right. Well, the first thing I tell you to do is take that hat off. But other than that, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, that's all right. You know, I. Um, so let, let's let's talk about this a little bit. So. When we talk about a Pharisee back in the day, right, the Pharisees were the ones that they, they were the religious leaders. They supposedly had all the knowledge. Right. They had all the, the, the training. They had all the everything. But what they didn't have was a heart for people. Right. And that and that's what they were lacking is a, is a love for, for their brother, a love for their sister. It was all about following the rules and not about gaining people for Christ. Right. And some of us in the church are kind of the same way We're we're about impressing people with us instead of impressing people with the love of Jesus Christ and allowing them to see what true love looks like in action, right? Instead of talking about it, we need to act it. So that's what I wanted to start with tonight. I, I got some different different examples and I'll start with the first one and y'all just add to it. Um, when we talk about modern day Pharisees, the people that are ruining the church, it's not unbelievers y'all that are ruining the church. It's not people that don't believe in God that are ruining the church. It's people that believe in God, claim God, and are damaging him from the inside out. So what they're doing is they're blowing up the church from inside out. It ain't got nothing to do with crosses on the yard anymore or any of that. It's the people in the church. All right. I heard a man preach today. Um, my, my cousin Adriana, she sent it about this dude preaching. If you're a Democrat, you, you're going to hell. If you're a Democrat, you can't be a Christian. That mess right there is modern day Pharisee. That's a perfect example of what are you talking about and where's the love and what you're talking about and why would anyone be drawn to your hate? You know, why would anyone be attracted to your hate? And you're supposed to be the one that's better than that. You're supposed to be a preacher. You're supposed to be leading. And instead, you're just like the world, you know, so 
that's the first thing I want to start with. The first modern day Pharisee trait is you believe showing up for worship every Sunday makes you right with God. Hmm. You believe that it's enough to just show up, right? Just show up to church. That's, that's what I want to start with. Do y'all have anything on that? Like just that mindset of brother Jamie, you gave me the perfect segue because we're trying to teach our kids. It's not just enough to show up when you're competing. There are winners and losers. It's not just enough to show up. There is a first place and a last place. There is a winning team and a losing team. We do keep score, right? So I just want to leave it in y'all hands and, and please just let it flow. Go ahead, bro, Jamie. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I just want to, I know for me, I, I think when we talk about, you know, just showing up to church, I think a lot of times people, you know, you stray away from church because sometimes people don't feel like they get the support they need from church. Right. And there is when there's a lack of communication, you know, the church is also a reflection of your neighborhood. Your neighborhood is a reflection of your household. And if there's no communication in your household, then it's probably not going to be much in the community, which goes into the church. And sometimes man, people have church hurt because they actually have real life hurt. And, you know, sometimes we miss it. I, look, I call it for me. It's like being in a double dutch. Like when you, you know, you're trying to operate in between the spirit and the flesh. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the person is asking the pastor or the leaders in church for advice. And it's like as a as a member or a leader of your church, you know, sometimes, man, you you flesh and you a person, too. So people have to be careful when they ask you for your opinion and then hold you hold you to a standard of the scripture. You're right of the cloth. You know what I'm saying? And it's like then people get hurt and say, oh, a pastor shouldn't respond that way. Well, the man responded that way. That my my feeling responded that way, you know, and, you know, I think sometimes, man, people truly have to understand what battle we're really facing. Right. You know, we, we are battling spirits and principalities. We, we know that. And when you get hurt, I know for me sometimes, man, just to be honest, before I even wanted to join the church or be a part of a fellowship, there are some things that I had to deal with personally. And I felt like there was an idea or an image that I needed to be whole before I went into the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be judged. I was afraid to step foot because I didn't want my sins. It's almost like I wanted to be in parallel of everybody else's sins before I go in there. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like, man, I was at the liquor house all last night or the club all night. I'm not going to church tomorrow, man. What I look like. You know what I'm saying? And not knowing that I might have been feeling convicted in that moment. It's like, you know, the Holy Spirit was battling with me. Like, hey, get to the altar. Mm -hmm. Get there. I'm talking to you. And I kept, you know, denying the access to God because of what I thought people might look at. Right. Because there were some people I saw in the club with me, too, that was going to be singing in the choir on bass <laughs> or whatever. You know what I'm saying? The next day. But I didn't want to be there. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And so. Also, what you said, showing up just wasn't enough. When I used to go to church, I used to feel leaving. Sometimes I felt empty because I actually didn't fellowship. I didn't have a relationship with the members. I didn't want to talk to anybody. But the one thing that I missed out on was my relationship with God and understanding what that church atmosphere is supposed to be. Like even something down as praise of worship and setting an atmosphere to engage, to invite the Holy Spirit to come speak to me. I didn't know any of that. So I was sitting there with my mouth shut closed off looking at people to serve me to God that God is waiting for me to open up so he could come into my life and it's hard because who can teach you that mm -hmm. you know because as a as a person sometimes especially when you're guilty you look at the hypocrisy in everybody else before you accept your own it's like I'm willing to see a common fault in you so I can justify me falling short you know and but we got to make the norm of healing and say hey bro I fail and it's okay you can get up you're forgiven for that and that comes with communication and compassion and just love for one another. And and, and to me, I, I would and I would yield is just, you know, I think people had that hurt, that church hurt, because sometimes people were looking for compassion and end up getting scripture. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. It's like, hey man, I, ah. I, I, I need a I need a hug. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. I need I need love. That's right. I, I, ain't come, days. I don't need a prayer, I need a sandwich. Yeah, it, you know, everything ain't spiritual. Like now you told me. Like, go read Romans and go to such and such. It's like, hey, I know the Lord can't give me more than I can bear, but I'm not bearing right now. I don't feel it. You know what I'm saying? I just sometimes I just need you as a person and I want to see you as a person that, that I don't feel alone. So people are like, I'm not going to go to church because I can't I can't relate. You know, so there's a relatability issue sometimes. Folks. It's well said. Well said. 
Man, Bishop Bell has spoken. Oh man, don't, there you go. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, you, you mentioned something early in in what you said, Jay, when you said uh, people are looking for support from the church. I, I'm just gonna be crazy. Can I twist this? When people say they're looking for support from the church, can y'all give us some examples so that everybody that's watching tonight, everybody that's listening tonight can know exactly what we mean. We're not just talking about, Jamie, you said scripture. We're not just talking about scripture. What what are the types of support we can give people, let's say, without giving them scripture? Mm -hmm. What can we do outside of scripture? I think one of the things that, you know, fellowshipping. I think that's something, you know, and I think church word is fellowshipping, but networking. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's the more worldly thing like get out and network like we we this is the funny thing is like we would get out and go network with strangers we don't even know that's right i go to a bar i go meet somebody yep. i get on eventbrite and say come now if you want to do this that's and right I, and i would network with somebody that has a common interest but the common love i have with our father in heaven i won't even talk to somebody else because we sometimes churches feel like games it's like hey bro you <laughs> You Don't can't go to, to that. Yeah, you can't go to that fellowship. What you doing? You're gonna miss the rapture. Yeah. It's like, dang. Yeah. I, 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 I think fellowshipping is one of those things because sometimes when people are alone, you don't need people to always fix your problems. Sometimes you just need somebody that can listen or feel like you're not alone or can actually relate. Yes, sir. And that's what Sister Sister Prince just put up there. Minister Prince just put up their encouragement. Think about this. You go to a bar. I'm a, I'm a go. I'm gonna go flesh. You go to a club. Someone's going to say, hey, what's up, dude? You're going to be greeted with love. Come over here and sit down next to me. Come get a drink with me. So mm -hmm. everybody's fellowshipping. Everybody, they're not judging you on what you got on. They ain't judging you just all together. Then we come to church and it's the opposite, right? It's what you got on. Where are you, what are you driving? Who you come with? Where are you sitting? How you sound? You know, it's everything else. And like you said, the encouragement. So we throw scripture at people. If I'm suicidal, obviously my connection with God, I'm not hearing from God at that moment, right? If I'm in a state of suicide, the last thing I want is someone to come to me with a scripture. I'm sorry. And I'm a pastor. The last thing I want, I need you to listen. I need you to listen for me. I need you to hear me out, hear what's on my heart. And then I need you to direct me to someone that can help me with my issue. And yes, God is our ultimate savior, but we also have to use the people you know, we got counselors, we got doctors, we got all these other people that we need to direct people to the network you're talking about. We should have a network better than anybody else. Yes. And instead of judging, we need to be praying, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we but the prayer should happen after as we're listening, as we're listening to what the heart is speaking, because another person's heart will speak to you. So I think I think it's very important what Sister Tennille said, encouraging when we walk in a church, do we greet people with love? Hey, y'all, come sit over here with us. Hey, I hadn't seen you before. You knew? My name is Joe. Hey, I see you're kind of shy. Why don't you come over? Come on, come on up here. No, nah, don't sit back there in the corner. Come on up here. You're good. I'll, I'll hit, I got your back. He's with me. And we don't do that. They do that in the club. You do He's that in the bar. <laughs> but you don't do that in the church. Yeah. So folks feel like these folk are fake. You know, yeah. with, with little kids on a playground, do you think they're looking to see who's black or white? No, nah, they're just playing. You want to let's go play. You got Unless ball, it's been okay, let's play. Encourage. Unless it's been taught otherwise. Unless it's been taught because it is a taught behavior. Right. It's a taught right. Behavior. And we demonstrate the behaviors that we don't want. And then we try to teach with our mouths the behaviors that we do want. And that doesn't work. Yes. So sir. we talk yeah. about being transparent. You know, preachers love that word. I'm going to be transparent. No, you're not. Tell them that you have moments of weakness. Tell them that you you've struggled with pornography. Tell them that you struggle with a wandering eye. Tell them that you struggle with maintaining your discipline when you're eating. All those simple things, you know, that's how we're not the modern day Pharisee. Show that you're a man too. And I fell down. And like Brother Jamie said, it's not about falling down. It's I get up every time. Yeah. yeah, I take some punches, but I get up. Meeting people where they are, right? Being mm -hmm. an ear and direction. That's really good, Pastor, Pastor Baker. That's, that's powerful because it's not about, well, you ain't been in church in three months. I hate when people do that. Oh, oh yeah. It's good to finally <laughs> see you. It's good to yeah. finally see you. <laughs> you know. Hey, and when you say that, you know, 
we also need to acknowledge that I see you outside of church. So Amen. we quick we quick to see you when you in the building. But if yes. I see you at Food Line or Goodwill, where you have that same energy that's to right. come, come greet on, me. Dude. And I think that's what discouraged folks whenever yeah. I see you. I, some people work together. You don't even talk to me at my job. But when we get in church, like, good to see you in the building. Uh, like, bro, I, I just took a break with you. Yep. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you didn't even talk to me. Yeah. And so that's where it feels like the disconnect. And that's where people can feel like things are false and it doesn't seem real. And it seems like we're more showing up for the the act. We show them more up for the the performance, yeah, outward the, actual, service. Yes. the outward service. And what I will say for me, man, you know, even if you read scriptures in the Bible, the action is where the deliverance is actually yes, taking place. It wasn't just a word. It was when Jesus said, go, you already the movement action words is what makes you start bringing people to God. So when we act out of love and we act and we showing ourselves in the process, you know, like when people, you don't have to be perfect, right? We we're, we own our way and God is going to heal us on our way, man. And, and I think that when, when people reestablish what love really is, I think that we have a Hollywood standard of what love and we don't go off of what love as the Bible said should be. I think that everybody looks at it as this knight in shining armor type of thing and not understanding the work and, and what actually comes into it. You know, and you know, the Bible gives you a definition of exactly what love is. That's you right. know what I'm saying? That's and right. sometimes again, from a flesh standpoint, if I never receive love and know what it looks like, and I never even had a relationship with God to talk to God, the only example I'm gonna have close to seeing him or the church is through me. It's yes, through sir. a Christian, it's through somebody else that believes. That's so right. I tell people your life might be the only Bible someone may ever read. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. They, you know, they're watching you. So when you when you smile at somebody. That might be the only smile they get. And, yeah. and, and, and Pastor Gordon, you said something like you said, like uh, if we go to the bar, right, and how you greet people at the bar. I had to shift my mindset to how I enter the church. And this, I'm a, this for me being transparent for anybody that's listening. If you go to the bar, you ain't been in a while. You don't care who said they ain't seen you in a while. Yeah. You there for what you're trying to get. Yep. I, I came for the wings. Man, I came I'm for the special. I came for the beer. <laughs> I didn't I didn't come. I didn't come here based off of your acceptance. I came here for what I need to get. Yes. And so if I when I walk into church now, I'm glad I'm glad I can fellowship with anybody and people that I'm happy to see. But if ain't nobody else in there, then I know I get my order quicker. So yes, I'm not sir. worrying about I'm <laughs> not worried. I'm not worried about, bro. I'm not I'm no longer worried about, you know, like. Man, I, I hope such and such ain't gonna be in there because I really want to order my wings. No, I don't care who's at the altar because I'm still gonna get my ticket in. I'm still gonna be there. So whether you greet me out of love or greet me out of disgruntled a disgruntled look, I know that the God I'm here to serve is gonna still let me put my order in. Ooh, so I would yes, challenge sir. folks is that you know the, the enemy gonna try to block you anywhere. But if you look at it that way, no matter where you go, even if you go to the hospital. If you go to that waiting room, you don't care who cough is worse or lighter than yours. You're there to see the doctor. Yep. So when I walk into the church, I'm walking to see to get deliverance. I don't come to see the people. I come to see God. My God. And and that's oh, why I, Bishop, <laughs> Bishop, <laughs> you gotta stop doing that, man. Bishop. <laughs> but but that's really that's really the mindset, man. It's like we get so discouraged by the people that we end up missing God. And so the devil, the devil, and I had to pray that off because the devil. Man, the devil will have you focusing on babies crying in church and you didn't even know kids was in there yes, just so you won't hear the word. Yep. It'll have you focusing on everything but the word. But when those distractions come, you pray harder because the enemy, look, the enemy is not even, you think he coming after you because you have nothing to steal? Come on. Like uh, bank robbers don't break into a bank with no money in it. Yeah. I hope not. That's a waste of time. So the enemy is not coming to kill, steal, or destroy an empty vessel. So again, man, I, I will encourage people today is like when you walk, when you walk into, you know, a fellowship, a church, a relationship, if you had a broken relationship with a church, you know, again, man, people are people, people make mistakes, but God is still God. Amen. You know what I mean? And Amen. I encourage people to go find a place that allows you to see God more than you can see the distractions. And, and being around like-minded people and finding the fellowship. I'm sorry, man. That thing feel good to me. I always tell people, you find a church the same way you try to find a gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, to me, I'm a Planet Fitness type, type of guy. I might want a slice of pizza. I might go in there once in a while. I got people that, that pay for a Planet Fitness membership that never go to the gym. There's some people that pay their tithes and offers that never step into the church. 
Mm-hmm. Amen. You know what I mean? They, they do. They just like, I just not going to go, but I know I need to sow. You know, and so I tell them your spiritual fitness need to fit where you get your physical fit, uh, spiritual fitness from. Mm-hmm. So like if I'm introducing myself, I don't need to go to a church that I know that I can't keep up. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they throw in a bunch of scriptures and, and, they, oh, they, and they're going. That's not going to fulfill me. That's not good. So guess what? You might want to go to a church. If you know praise and worship your thing, that church might be good in praise and worship. That's their ministry. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you know you need to be filled up on the word, then you go find a teaching church or you need some motivation, find a preaching church. But what you shouldn't do is be judged by anybody because what you need for your spiritual life and relationship with God. Brother Jamie, can I ask you a question? You, yes, you Pastor Gordine. Yeah. So does my season change with what I need? Should I stay in one church for my whole life? So look, I have a debate with that, right? Because what happened is growth. See, your spiritual growth grows and sometimes God calls you to a different place. You know, why Why are sometimes the only people in ministry is the only people that uh, leaders in ministry are the only people that can outgrow their ministry? Why come this person can't say, hey, the Lord is leading me to another fellowship or to another place. But the member sometimes it's a loyalty test. Like, hey, don't go to no other church. Like, wait a minute. God can give you the ability to grow, but I got to stay here. Mm-hmm. So you do go through seasons because guess what? In the comment, I see growth will move you. Because what happened is life and circumstances is going to move you. Moses leaving <laughs> Moses by the river. I mean, Moses by the Red Sea and Moses not making to the promised land was two different seasons. His faith and where he was learning from God, the conversations were totally different. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And Ambition. sometimes Come on. sometimes you got to align yourself with what you can get fed. Because, again, people are people. So sometimes your leaders can only lead you. But so far. But again, we all serve the bigger kingdom. And that's God that we serve. So I shouldn't be I, I'm not going to be jealous if you go to another fellowship that still feed you to grow in his name. Because we still in what? The bigger kingdom. It's Amen. not about the amount of members I have. You know, I look at it just like at me and my job, man. It's like, look, some people going to outgrow me. They will. They're not going to be there. But what you do know is that as long as you have a foundation, you stay true. Don't chase fads. I will challenge people. You go to a place that can feed you what you need. You might be going through a season of a depression, and this ministry can offer you stuff that, you know, the pastor them been through it, the first lady been through it. They offer classes. They offer fellowships and network to do that. Then you might be better on your feet. And there's another church that do more community outreach and you want to be a part of that. You know what I mean? I, I would say to me, if you ever switch a ministry, you don't leave one to go dog the other. Exactly. You know, that, that's a level of respect. You can outgrow a ministry or just desire something else. It don't even mean that you outgrew. It just mean like, you know what? I desire something else. Your seasons do change. As life go on, you will change. It will change. You know what I mean? But I, I would say feed, pray on that thing before, before you make those decisions. But again, as long as we don't lose sight of who we serve, we serve God. Mm-hmm. We serve God. So my, my mindset is as long as I don't lose you, lose a soul in the kingdom, we still win. Amen. Come on. Let's, <laughs> um, let's go to a couple of the, I know we have some comments. Can you can you put some back some of the comments back on um Pastor D that were we, got them all. we hit them all? So I know one of them was coming with expectancy. One was simply love, right? Mm-hmm. One. So all of these things we're talking about, you, you think about, uh, there's a scripture in Luke and it talks about people coming to pray. And one was a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. And the Pharisee standing by himself prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like that other man. Do we do that in church? Do we have people that think that they're better the Bible tells us not to esteem ourselves higher than anybody else, right? So when somebody walks in that looks different than you, how do you welcome them in? Because I will tell you as a pastor, sometimes most of the work is done by the time a member, by the time a, a visitor gets in the building, the work has been done. You know why? Because they've been greeted at the door. They've been greeted in the parking lot. They've been treated with love before they could even step foot in here. So mm-hmm. the problem is, Let's say, let's say y'all walk up, you walk up to the door, you're treated poorly at the door, you're already tired, you didn't want to come, you hadn't come in a long time. Folks giving you the side eye as you sit down. They tell you to sit in the back of the church, right? Nobody tells you where the bathroom is. You don't know what you're doing, you're all alone, and and you see groups of people sitting together talking and laughing, and you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. Then a preacher gets up there to preach. It doesn't matter what I say at that point. Because the sermon has already been preached. The sermon of division, a sermon of 
disconnect. It's already been preached. So by the time a preacher gets up there, it's like blah, 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 blah. You don't hear anything. It's like white noise because all, all you remember is that dude dogged me out at the door. The pastor might be the best pastor in the world. It won't matter. And that's the power I say that members have. So don't put it all on a pastor because really most of the work is not done by the pastor. I hate to tell y'all, most of the work is done by the people in the church. They're the ones that are evangelizing. They're the ones inviting people. They're the ones setting the atmosphere. Because yes, if you set the atmosphere with a smile, there is so much power in that. Because you might even say, I didn't understand everything, but I understood the love, right? Love is universal. It don't matter what language you're speaking it in. When you show love to someone, they, they will always remember it. So I love these comments. Keep the comments coming. Because the next thing it says here about a Pharisee is you believe God actually needs you. That's what a modern day Pharisee, I'm doing God a favor. You throw your you throw your three nickels in the in the offering. And you're like, Psh, be, be thankful. Or you throw your ten thousand dollars in the offering and you feel like that absolves you from being a good person. You know, you feel like that absolves you from listening to people that didn't put money in there. You feel like that makes you better than the person that didn't have a dime to sow. And all of that is ridiculous because God don't need your money. He wants your heart, mm -hmm. you know. But what better way to show your heart instead of giving, instead of dropping more money in there saying, how many, I put 20 in here. I want someone else to put 20. Why don't you say, I put 20 and here I'm giving somebody else 20 to sell to. Or here, I'm giving you 20 to take home with you. So I'm, I'm offering 20 to the church and I'm offering 20 to you because you took the bus in here. And I know you can use that 20. And shame on the church when you see someone struggling. Shame on anybody asking them, for a church to pay for a jet when you got people riding the bus. And I know yeah. there's there's certain preachers in Atlanta that always yeah. want to raise money for jets and half of their congregation is taking the bus to church. But yeah. you want a jet to fly around the world. You know, and there's there's where these false Pharisees come in where we're doing I'm doing you a favor, right? Yeah. We as preachers think we're doing our members a favor. We're not doing we're all we're, our job is not to do anything but deliver the message that God put in us. That's it. And then to demonstrate the love of Jesus in everything we do. That's our job. You yeah. know, and like like Brother Jamie said, my my expectation for me should be different than his expectation. I shouldn't expect him to do what I do because I've been called to do what I do. So don't get mad when someone else isn't doing what you do because you have a passion for it. God put that in you. So to meet them at that level means loving them where they are, encourage them, listening. And then rebuking, but rebuke takes time. You gotta have the trust that first you had their ear in love. Yeah. If you start with rebuke, you ain't gonna get nothing else. You have their reward. You but if you start with love, and then the third time they come, you're like, look, brother, three times in a row now you've come with the same issue. Let me help you. And again, you're coming at them with love, but it's a different way to come at them instead of here you go again, or where yeah. you've been the last three weeks. You ain't gonna gain anybody with that. How about well, I'm glad to see you, my brother? I've been I, I've missed you, and I'm glad to see you. Come on by me. Same. Look at this. Same God, different assignments. All three of us right now, same thing. All of us have different assignments. I can't be brother Jamie, and if I tried to be brother Jamie, man, I go home crying every night. You know, because that dude is smooth. Yeah. I yeah. have to be the best me I can be. I can't be the best Pat Pipkin. I can't sing yeah. like him. I can't move like him. I can't preach like him. But what I can be is the best me. Yeah. And that's my encouragement to everybody. You want more people to come to church? Be the church. Mm. Be the church at McDonald's. Yes. Be the church at Chick Fil A. Be the church right. when you're in the long line and they mess yes, your food yes. up. Be the church. Yes. Don't yes. worry about it. It's okay, my sister. I, I get it. You messed up my order. I can wait a minute. That's Be the good. church. Anybody have well, anything like to add to that? Well, I mean, it, it all goes back to we have to learn how to grab them and get their attention to get them to focus to Christ. Um, it says, you know, and I don't want to go too much scripture, but Jesus said, if I be lifted, I draw all men. So what you're saying is even in food line, mm -hmm. at, at Taco Bell, at Chick-fil-A, if we're representing God in those places, it's going to spark something in somebody else to say, man, this guy's always happy. Mm -hmm. I had a guy tell me one time, you know, because I, I do lawn care on the side as well. And he was like, man, you're always smiling. You always mm -hmm. seem like you're in a good mood. It's like it's always a good day. And I tell him, you know, I have issues like everybody else. I just choose to make it a good day. Amen. I choose to smile because I know that, you know, this trouble won't last always. I got a God that's got my back. Yes. And 
to, to piggyback on something that one of you guys said a minute ago, I got so excited listening to Bishop Bell, I kind of forgot which one of y'all said it. But uh, <laughs> keep calling me Bishop Bell. <laughs> that <ain't> funny. <laughs> <laughs> but in all sincerity, man, uh, we got to remember that before Jesus performed any miracle, he took care of the natural first. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm mm -hmm. struggling with 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 my finance, if I'm struggling with, with food, if I'm struggling with with the, I'm I'm gonna meet you where you are first. I'm gonna offer assistance on the natural side first. Yes, to gain your rapport, to gain your trust. I mean, let's be let's be honest. Drug dealers do it all the time. Man, sure enough, you know oh, they 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 offer a pair of Jordans. Oh, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll throw you a little cash. They'll throw you just, just to get you su sucked in. And then they're going to try to doctrinize you into whatever they have going on. That's good. But yeah. they just took the same model that Jesus yeah. did. Jesus met the natural first mm -hmm. and then he introduced the spiritual. Yep. And I think if we learn to do more of that, I think that we'll see a big coming back to the church because yeah. we're always asking for, asking for, asking yeah. for instead of giving. So yeah. just piggybacking off of that with what was just said, too, if we're the reflection of God, right? Think about this. You go into a you go into a um, food court, right? Is it easier for someone to walk up to you and say, hey, come over to my restaurant and taste this? Or is it easier to bring a sample and say, I want here? Yep. Oh, this is good. Where's it at? Oh, it's over here. Our problem is the Bible says taste and see that he's good. But we don't even we got a we got a sour lemon face talking about a God that we want people to taste. That's yeah. right. It's nasty to you. Why should I go taste it? That's right. Yeah. Like if you're miserable with it, why in the world, if you're reflecting what God really is, if 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 someone's going to Texas and killing all these kids and I am going to speak on it and 14 and, and killing a teacher and doing all this ridiculousness. Yeah. Right. And that's the reflection of what god is why would anybody want to be that right so my point is what we what we um exhibit right what we demonstrate is what's going to leave folks so yes, right. we don't demonstrate it we don't we don't repent we don't do anything and we don't show how good god is you know i should be cheering for my brothers in everything when his daughter is on there and, he, and brother jamie said check out my daughter man she's killing it I'm cheering just like it's my girl. Why? Because yeah. it takes a village. Yeah. And, and when Pastor Pipkin's son's playing ball, when his daughter's cheering, now they've, yeah. they've done all that, they've graduated, I'm still cheering like they're my kids because we're all in this community That's right. together. My, my nephew, my, my sister's on here now. Her, her nephew's, I mean, her son, rather, my nephew's about to graduate. Cheering them on, right? Yeah. Trap beats, cheering them on. It doesn't have to be your kid because we're human beings. And that's what we forgot about in the church. Yeah. We're human beings first. So all of these rules, I'm a man, you're a man. We have the same desires. We worry about the same things. We worry about not having enough money to support our family. We worry about something happening to our kids and our, and our spouses. We worry about not being enough of a provider for what we need to be. Those are some of our worries, right? Mm -hmm. So we should be speaking that language to other men. Instead of speaking a man language of condemnation, we speak a language of, hey, brother, you're not holy enough. Hey, brother, why you aren't, Why don't you have a suit on? Hey, brother, you, you, you don't need to be dressed that way. Or, hey, just, just like, hey, Pastor Pippian, why you got a hat on? Show me in the Bible. Just, just this is where I want to go with this. Show me in the Bible where anyone said that hats were forbidden for men. Coverings over your head were forgiven, for, forbidden. And here's what I do know. In the Old Testament, I know what the, the Hebrew, Hebrew tradition is, is your head is covered with something, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. to me, that's what a yarmulke is. Isn't that something over your head? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but yet we're taking off our hat coming into church. But then ladies have big old hats, right? Have a hat that'll block out the sun and you can't see around it. Now, the <laughs> yeah. Bible tells me that that's a distraction for men, for men and women to worship because mm -hmm. I'm more focused on the hat. So, Pastor D, so many rules until we need to change them. If we just love, it covers a multitude of sins. We got to get back to the yeah. base. Yeah. yeah. Got to get and, back to the base. And that's what I was going to say. And that's such a great comment is that we're in a time now where everybody want to be our owner. We need to take back as a church the ownership of love. Yes, sir. See, we, we have given the, the wrong keys of ownership to love to the wrong people. And here's what I'm about to say is that we have become in a society where people want to lead out of lies and hurt out of truth oh. 
people people use an opportunity to be honest to tear you down. Yes, sir. And to the point where honesty and people say, well, I'm only keeping it real because I love you. And it's like, no, you're not showing compassion in your time and it's wrong. You're using the opportunity and calling it truth to tell you how you really feel about me. You know what I mean? And and I hear that all the time. Oh, you can't handle the truth? Um, no, no, because your timing is off with this. You're not being truthful. You're being hurtful. Mm -hmm. And people have disguised hurt and call the truth and then get mad at you for standing on your own two feet when you stand up for yourself. Right. And it's like, no, we got to get to a place where we lead out a true love and compassion with one mm -hmm. another. Like my my love should not kill, steal or destroy you yes, at sir. all. It shouldn't. Yes, sir. It shouldn't leave you feeling empty. If yes, I'm loving somebody and they feel empty, then we got to reevaluate what love feels like. And yeah. so we're around here. I mean, even look at social media. They got the heart button. We so we have been so like brainwashed just to love things. I even get on my kids about that. Oh, I just absolutely love this. Do you? Because we say it so much that we don't even really appreciate it when we get it. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I love these m &Ms. I love this. Oh, I love I got tomorrow off. I love that they, we say love so much that it only when you recognize it and when you actually see it, it's been so it's been decompressed and put down so much that you can't even really differentiate between this. OK, is this you leading me out of love to hurt me or is this the love of what it is? Yes, you know, is, is this true? What is the representation of? And so when I say we need to take ownership of that, it's meaning like I don't care what you look like or what you're going through. I love you enough to stand with you. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding that me standing with you doesn't mean that I fix it for you. Yeah. And that's what people got to understand. When people give you love, it doesn't mean that they replace your your problems. I can love. I had to learn to love people from a distance. I can still love you, but be far enough where you can't cut or hurt me. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't. Even though I'm standing with you, don't mean I condone you. That's yes. right. Doing what you're doing, I, I still love you, but I don't condone it. Yeah, Again, I, we 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 are called to understand. Like so, having two daughters, I don't agree with every mindset. I don't agree with every lifestyle. You know, but here's what I've learned. I've learned to understand where people are coming from from every lifestyle. I've learned to understand where they are. I understand what their mindset is. And I, I also understand how to love them with the love of Jesus Christ. Because frankly, if all sin are sin, and I'm loving this person for their sin despite their sin, why am I not loving this one despite theirs? And the comment was just made. We The Bible tells us to mourn with those who mourn, to, to weep with those who weep, to, to rejoice with those who rejoice, right? If you hurt, I hurt. If you cry, I cry. If you're happy, I'm happy because I care and I love you. So what you should be, what I'm passionate about, you should be passionate about, right? Now, Pastor A, you just confused me. You you confused me because you said something um, that, that, you know, sin is sin. I thought sin was categorized. That's that's what the Pharisee will tell you, right? This sin, <laughs> this sin, you know, don't be, I, and, and I know people get mad when I talk about this, but you can be a child molester and walk up in the church, but don't be gay. Do come not on, be man. gay and come to church, but, but you can be, you can be a wife beater. You can yep. be an adulterer. You can be oh, a drunk. Yeah. You can be a drug addict. You can be a former drug dealer. You can just been released from prison for murder. But do not be gay. Oh, yeah. But yep. we're supposed to say, but I, I love you with the love of Jesus. I love you and you can't do nothing about it. We sing all those songs. Mm -hmm. But then we decide who can come in the door and who can't. So we're a courtroom, not a, not a hospital. A mm -hmm. hospital takes the sickest people first, right? A church mm -hmm. takes the wellest people first. Who looks the wellest? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Imagine good. turning away the sickest people. No, you're too sick. Wow. Come back when you feel better. Come back when you look better. That's what, hey, what the church has become. What's that scripture? These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Yes, sir. That's what it looks like in, in church. It's like we, we, we say all the right things, but when it comes down to action, mm. you know, you can really see where people's heart is, where the hearts are. Yeah. And, and you got to also, to me, you got to respect people's perspective during the storm. When Jesus walked on water, they was in a storm and all the disciples was out. You know what I'm saying? And everybody was feeling that storm. And Jesus knew he could calm the storm. But only one person stepped out. Mm -hmm. It's a perspective. They all saw it the same one. But Peter stepped out because his perspective was a little different. What he had on the inside was a little different. But ain't nobody in the place to judge because you know what? What they saw was different. That's right. And what we got to understand is that I think that we look at everybody's storm and we judge everybody's storm. And then we judge people for being Peter and stepping out in a storm and, and talk about them. Who do they think they are walking towards God when they got all this going on in their life? Who do they think they are to be giving advice and they have failed relationships and fair marriages? Who are they to be doing this and they can't even get? Look, man, that person is stepping out in their storm. 
And they notice, stepping out and walking to Jesus didn't rebuke. Jesus didn't rebuke either party. He didn't rebuke Jesus for step. He didn't rebuke Peter for stepping out. Yep. And he didn't call out the rest of them saying, why didn't y'all step out here with him? Because yep. everybody has a different assignment and a different mindset. And, and everybody's going to go at different speeds. Yeah. That's exactly. right. And, and that's where, for me, holistically, that's how I look at us as a body. I, and I think that, you know, like you said, man, I, that line you said was cold. The hospital take the sickness and the church take the riches. I mean, it, that is so cold, man, because it, it's so true. I think that it, it, once again, if people just, if we take back that ownership of love, that's going that thing hit me. That's gonna stay with me. It's like, nah, we we need to put in LLCs for love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We need to we need to take ownership of love yeah. and take back the pure definition of what it is, and not what the enemy is telling you what it is. Because what people have to realize is that <laughs> the devil's an angel too. Mm -hmm. He knows scriptures too. Sure enough. You know what I mean? So and there's some. There's some angelic people that pretend to be angelic that, that might be cursing you. You know what I mean? Yes, and, and, and you got to, you that's where you got to have the sermon to have a word on your own. But that's why I tell people like love, again, love doesn't fill you, mm. make you feel empty. You know what I mean? And, and for me, you know, love is kind. Love, you know, we all know that scripture. I start putting people's name in the place of love. And if you don't meet those characteristics, then you're not a person of love. Wow. That, that humbles me in my marriage and how I talk to my wife. If I'm not, I replace love with my name and I'm making sure I treat her that way. Am I kind? Am I, pat am I patient? So let me ask you something, both of y'all gentlemen, about this. Yep. Should anybody, even when you're condemned, right? So should there be some rebuke in the church? There should be, right? There's always rebuke for all of us. We can all grow. That being said, I should never feel, even in, even in a state where my toes were stepped on, I should feel better leaving church than when I came in. So I, I truly believe that. Like, I believe that there's a way, like you said, there's timing is everything. Mm -hmm. Timing is everything. Jesus didn't speak on everything that he could say. He, he picked his spots. Most of the time he said nothing, you know, and, and there, there is so much power in your silence because he was listening. He was hearing what other people were saying. He was acting upon their heart, right? Like you said, you have a bunch of hungry people. We're talking about, I'll pray for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a homeless person out on the street. The first thing you want to do is pray for them. Well, the first thing you could do is make sure that they got shoes on their feet. It's cold out there. They got a jacket on. They got a scarf. They, yeah. They're hungry. Like we don't meet people's needs. And then one of the things that we do as a Pharisee, and I say we, the church, you condone in secret what you preach against in public. Mm. So we condone in secret certain things, right? Yeah. But in public, uh, -uh yeah. you know, you know, I don't believe in that. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. It's amazing how many how many of us preach discipline in the church. How many pastors preach discipline but can't even push a plate back? Yeah, man, I eat eight pieces of chicken, but we, we're preaching discipline. <laughs> Y'all need to be disciplined in everything you do but can't even be disciplined enough to say I've eaten enough. Mm -hmm. And and, and y'all can keep me honest here, man, because, you know, I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I'm wet behind my ears with some of this stuff, man. But I feel like we need to stop putting protocol over purpose. Protocol, man, I hate that word. I, I feel like sometimes people put the protocol of the business of an organization over what might need to take place okay. that people might need to receive from the church of God. And again, and, 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 you know, I don't know. So some of the stuff I'll be trying to learn, because I, I look, I know there's, there's certain conferences and there's certain things and there's certain things, you know, as far as a protocol go. Like I think about, you know, one of the commandments said, thou shalt not steal. We automatically think about life or death. But I think about joy, happiness, peace. You know, like my brother D, he said that all the time, man, you shouldn't steal my happiness. You shouldn't steal my ideas. You shouldn't steal my joy. You shouldn't steal my gift. Yep. Like I got a gift to do in the church and because you don't feel like God gave an assignment to you, then I got to sit on it. That's another way I think churches die is because they don't cultivate the gifts of the people that have it because they don't feel like they follow protocol and they silencing people that got, got a word from God, that got a gift from God, that God is telling them to share. And because it doesn't fit them, you know what I mean? It's like, man, I don't want to have to wait till you die, Pastor. I don't mm -hmm. want to have to stay here for 30 or 40 years so I can have a chance to get yes, voted sir. on to come in and fulfill my purpose. Can you let me operate in the spirit that I feel necessary without feeling guilty or condemned because God didn't give you my message? 
He don't supposed to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, right. sometimes you can be in line, but again, the guy that I serve, he might have gave me something because I'm 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 strong enough to carry it. Mm -hmm. And that's what people have to understand and humble themselves in the spirit. Because just like Job, look, God gave that to Job because he knew Job, his good and faithful servant, can endure what he put him through. He couldn't put it on many people. And sometimes even in our flesh, we got folks in life that can go through stuff. And it doesn't make sense, but they actually are the ones that's designed that can get through it. God know them. He's like, hey, I know you can handle this. And, and I think that if we want to build and bring people like we started this show, how do we get people want to come back to church? Is that you allow people also their opportunities to let their light shine and not make them feel like they're only there for the tithe and they're only there for the offering and they're only there to see you. Yes. You make people feel like, hey, whatever gift you have, whatever ministry you have, that's why I love my church revive. My pastor said, Jamie, you good in the community, bro. I love your outreach. I love what you do. I want to feed you in here. Uh, pastor Eric Thornton that we talked to, he said, man, I don't condemn the drug dealer because you know what? He might be good with my money. Let me get him maybe on my board to start. <laughs> hey, we need to raise some money. some count. Use your gift. Although he used to use it for bad, we can repurpose it to use it for good. And we got to get that. That's why I say take back that ownership of love, because if I'm looking at you through a lens of love, if I see that, I mean, we, you know, I, we are praying on that together. You know what I mean? Yeah, we want to be organized. You know, we want to be timely. And I hate some people misuse that. You know, God is a God of order and this, that, and the third. But no, you're using that as a sense of control. Yes, sir. Like, <laughs> like exactly. you know, I could be in order with my idea, too. Won't, won't you help me formulate it then? Yes, sir. You know, if, if it's that. But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to get on my screen. No, no, this is good. This is, this is good. This is what we want to we, we want to understand and we want to grow. And the other thing that makes me sick to my stomach, what I hear all the time is we need more young people in the church. Right. Children are our future. No, they're not. They're our present. Right. They're not the future. They are now. And the problem is because you don't let them operate in their gifts now. When they become 18, they wave goodbye to the church. You need to get them involved now. And I'm not just saying get up there on a Sunday morning and say, Jesus wept and then sit down. You got to let them lead. You got to let them have a voice in the church. You got to let them have ideas in the church. You got to let them have their own way of doing things. Yes, you structure it. Of course, there's order behind it. Yes. So my job is not to it's, it's, it's to really direct that energy in a certain direction. It's not to kill their energy because yeah. they have a, a young people have an energy we don't have. So my wisdom coupled with their enthusiasm equals power, right? That's so it. all it is is directing it. It's a laser beam, but we need to focus it where it needs to be shot at. That's my job. So yeah. our young people, we, we have tuned them out to the point where we don't even, you know, we, we'll have a youth Sunday, but on a youth Sunday, an, an old rusty dusty like me will still preach. Well, then it's not a youth Sunday. <laughs> or or every, there'll, there'll be one song by the kids and then the the, the, this grown choir gets up there or then you got older people trying to sing because they're so worried about it sounding a certain way instead of letting them praise the Lord in the way they know how and let yes. the chips fall where they may. I promise you, if you empower these young people, they'll be inviting their own people because they invite them to everything else. Yes. And uh, when you Fortnite, said that, you sit on you, Fortnite and all of a sudden you got 20 people playing Fortnite. Yeah, you got talk about that. <laughs> you got five year old singing cants and spirituals. Yes, that sir. Ain't, that ain't they ain't <laughs> that ain't their song. You know <laughs> that, that that's not their song. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and you sure it sounds good, but that's not their I got song. Cheese. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, y'all know me, man. I get a little wild like that. But it's like, man, hold on, man. This this five year old man, I'm about to go outside and ask him to look at my old. Man, He's squalling. <laughs> But you know, I, I, I'm gonna get back on this love thing too, man. What I want to say is, and this can help in the spirit, in the flesh, in the real life too. People got to stop treating love like a chore. Mm. Man, we and and, and if some in somebody marriage, in your children relationship, and your family relationship, or even in your relationship in the church, if you saying you doing stuff because you have to, you know, you looking at love and things out of chores and obligation instead of out of fulfillment, mm. Mm -hmm. like. I choose to love you because I want to share something with you. Now, when I start saying I have to do this, well, you know, I, I have to show up to church because, you know, I got to go. I uh, got to show them my love. Then then what, what's your mindset when you're there? Like for me, I put it in a sentence. Well, I have to take my wife out tonight. Why? Because she want to do a date night. I just need to take her out. Okay, you're doing that to check off a list, but you should want to take her out because you actually love her. Mm 
Yes, sir. Like I can't wait to go see her because I want to see her dressed up and I want to connect with her. That's how we got to stop looking at chores. Like even with the kids, it's like I be joking with guys. Stop saying you babysitting your children. You, you raising them. You yes, ain't right. babysitting your kids. You should look forward to want to have a conversation with your children. You should look forward to want to go to the teacher, the teacher conferences. You should look forward to want to do all those things because it's not an obligation. You do it because you get fulfillment, and that out of that, you're you 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 accept the obligation because you're fulfilled with what you're doing. Yes, and I think that people are confusing obligations with love, and they stand in situations because they feel obligated to you know like well I don't want to pay extra bills. I don't want to do this. I don't feel like driving anywhere. I don't feel like doing that. Then where's the love? Love should make you feel empty and love should make you feel heavy. You do it because you feel feeling fulfilled. Your cup run over when you're serving the God. So why, why anything? And that's why I say that ownership of love is because God did not die. Just he died for us to have life and have life more abundantly. And I don't think people really understand the abundantly peace is that he didn't die for you to just have mediocrity. He didn't die for you just to break even. He died for you to have an overflow. And I think that we operate in a, in a, in a jealousy world that your overflow, people tell you that it's a mess. Yeah. When my cup overflow, you got somebody pointing and say, you spilling out. Uh -huh. Now I look at it, that's an overflow of blessings. It's not that I'm wasting anything. It's that I got enough, hopefully, that it drip down to you and then your cup will run over. Mm -hmm. But we got people that try to make you pick your cup up before it even overflows in your Come life. On. And then you feel condemned about having overflow. You got jealous people. Man, I'm telling you, this thing will get right for me. You got people that are getting mad at you for trying to overcut your own personal, you know, your own personal overflow and love for yourself. How many times you try to love yourself and somebody telling you that you conceded or what you smiling about because they are upset because you find joy. But if I give you the ownership of my heart, then you're going to feel fulfilled. You no longer have access to my joy because it doesn't belong to you. It comes from God. So I no longer have to look for man to fulfill me because God fulfilled that purpose. But that, that's right. I'm going I'm to I'm back off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. But nah, you good, oh, man. You're good. I think, I I think too many that. times we look for validation from other people. And and that's you know? where and we shouldn't seek validation through man. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, but exactly. it's, it's, it's natural, again, because, again, if I don't know what love feels like, then I'm only going to assess my love through people. That's how I place on God. Amen. See, I, you know, when my mother died, I was mad at God because of how I view my love for people. And I couldn't differentiate between him protecting me or me going through some things. And I couldn't understand, like, God, you are putting all this on me. I was one of those people, God, if you're real, then why are you letting babies die? And why are you letting this happen? If not, I didn't understand that we are in a spiritual warfare. And he is designed and came down so we can understand, Jamie, you're not uh, you're not a person that has a, a spirit. You're a spirit that has a body, that has a soul. And understand that you operating in the vessel. And I created heaven because spirits don't die. So those spirits that don't want to be right and believe is going to go into hell. I got them locked up. There's some, there's some spirits right now that he got chained up. They can't even get to us because he know how deadly they are. Yes, and he's sir. telling us that I will have internal light if I just love him. And yes, he's like, and because that's why powerful the Holy Spirit is, because he knows we are spirit beings. He's like, I'm still going to ride with you if you just allow me to come in. Now, just drive this vessel. You go through this journey. You in this world. You not of it. You just passing through. And when I start operating in that and I start moving in that and I start feeding my spirit, then I notice my flesh start feeling better mm -hmm. because my spirit, man, was 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 uplifted a little bit more. Yes, and then sir. I start watching how I think. I start watching how I talk. I start watching also who was around me and who was feeding me. You know what I mean? That's the other thing. If you want to yes, know, like, this is probably going to be my quote for tomorrow. If you want to know what your self-love look like, look at the people that love you. Because that's a reflection of how you feel about yourself. Come on. The Amen. people around you will give you an assessment of what you think and feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you got people that only dog or talk crazy or talk negative, it's because you probably talk crazy to yourself. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Do y'all so Pastor Pip, can you have something you want to share? Man, Bishop Bell. Man, you, you got, stop doing listen, that, man. Listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and I was sincere. This is good That's stuff. Bro, this is good stuff. I'm love and I love the way it's rolling because I'm sure folks came on thinking that Pastor Ed, Pastor Pipkin, we're gonna do a bunch of the talking, do a bunch of the leading. But I love the way God has flipped this thing. Jay, you are killing it, man. Yes, sir. And, and you you are representing from from the pew. And this was my this was my prayer. Yes, when we do this, y'all, it's this is not a Bible study. I yes. want to do this. I want to talk. I, I want us to be able to not only express some things, but I want people to have a voice that are that are coming on here with their comments because this is really what the out the world sees of our church, right? 
Yeah. They don't see us unified like this. They, they expect us to be on here arguing about this point and that point. And this scripture says this and this scripture says this and this scripture says this. But one of the problems we have is we read the Bible. Pharisees read the Bible to substantiate your convictions, not to be shaped in God's image. So sometimes we're trying to use the Bible to justify our bad behavior instead of using the Bible to change our behavior. Right. So we come to church and we say, well, the Bible says I can treat women like, you know, women are women are the weaker vessel. Well, wait a minute. You're taking things totally out of context. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you got you got folks talking about where where's your suit in church? Where where was Jesus suit in church? You know, I, I promise you, Jesus didn't wear a suit to church because there were no suits. He wore right. a robe. So then what? So for all these people saying that women shouldn't wear pants, that man wore, wore a robe. So I thought I thought a long dress or a robe that looked like a dress is pretty effeminate in our times. But mm -hmm. back then he was wearing that. So my point is, if as, as these things have been created, we are making rules out of stuff that don't matter. We're fighting stuff that's irrelevant. And the love of Jesus Christ, like you said, is gone. And because of that, People say, if I'm if, if I'm not going to get love in here, I might as well go get high out there. I still don't feel the love, but at least my body feels better. Yes. At least I can get something to get a temporary reprieve from this world. But imagine coming to a hospital and feeling worse leaving the hospital than you did coming in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're sick coming in and you and you're terminal going out. And, and, and that that to me scares me so much that we don't have we. Folks should come in here. I'm not saying you're going to agree with everything, but you should be able to come in and say, you know what? They respect me. They might not agree with everything I say, but the people love me. They respect me and they listen to me. They hear me out. They don't just try to talk over me. You know, and if we can get back to that point in the church, I'm not saying be disrespectful. But like you said, the keeping it real, keeping it real is, is an excuse to destroy someone and, and, and let them have it. And then say, well, the word says this. Well, we know what the word says, but you're being hip hypocritical because the word also says what you're doing is wrong. You know, judge the own, judge the beam in your own eye before you look at the splinter or the moat in someone else's eye, right? Mm -hmm. So these are the ways that we're going to get back to this. I will, I will ask any older seasoned preacher, seasoned minister, seasoned leaders in the church, if you're not asking people that don't go to church why they're not going, you're missing the boat. If you're asking people in the church what's wrong with the church, sometimes they don't know. You, you know, you want new people to come to the church, but you're asking the old people that have been to eight churches what, what brings them to church. You know, we just have to be careful that we don't utilize. God has given us a, a, a voice, but the voice is love and, and, and reciprocating Jesus' love that he gave us first, right? So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That should be my banner. That should be what's on my shirt. That should be every time someone sees me, they see that sacrificial love. When Jamie sees me, he's like, hey, hey, I'm short. I can't get into that. I can't get into that ball game. My daughter's in there. Well, here's some money to get in. It should be automatic. That's what brotherhood should be about. And it shouldn't be necessarily about me knowing him. It should be about I see someone in need and I see the need. If I see a single mom and she's having to put stuff back and I have the money, I should pay for it. I'm sorry. If you see that that it's, it's not like she's putting back danishes, she's putting back milk. She's putting back whatever, just so. You know, and who cares if it doesn't go the way it's supposed to? Who cares if you were con? It doesn't even matter because you did the right thing. And even if that person did wrong with your right, someone else that was watching you from afar, it's not, it's never the person you're directly loving. It's always someone on the outskirts that are watching what's going on. Mm -hmm. Saying, wow, it's what's in your heart, Sister Tenille. That's 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 what it's all about. That's how we're gonna get people back to the church. Amen. It starts from inside out. Yeah, and, and I, like you say, man, the church is beyond those four walls. Yes, sir. You know, if we if we start if we start trying to get people to a location and get them to the destination, I think we'll be so much better when it comes to serving God. The destination is to get you eternal life and get you to heaven. Yes, so if if the only time I see you 
is when I go to Walmart yep. and that's my chance to pray with you or show you some type of love, then, hey, that's why I'm going to meet you. I'm not going to not do my part to show you compassion or show you love and give you an opportunity. Because when you see my life, I want it to be a reflection like, man, there's something about you, brother. And I give all the glory to God. And mm -hmm. that could be the that could be the bridge. But if I keep mm -hmm. waiting for you to show up at this location, well, come see me on Sunday or come yes. see me on Tuesday nights or do this, that and the third. Because not everybody's there yet. There are some people that is, but you got to meet people to where they are. Um, and sometimes right. we got to have that discipleship about ourselves to go far and wide mm -hmm. and meet people where they are. And and I will say this, man, and I know probably running on time, I don't want to go over. I, I, I said this and it could be a bit controversial, but there are some people that has a word for God that doesn't have leadership qualities. Amen. And people have to understand that there is a leadership capability that goes into a place. And I do think sometimes in church as leaders, if you know you're not a great leader, then you surround yourself with powerful people to help you lead. Humble yourself. All day. You know what I'm saying? And because, you know, and, I, and even with Moses, you know, Moses, you know, he showed signs of being a great leader, but then he allowed the people to convince him to not follow what he was given to him. He couldn't control it. It was hard to leave at that point because he's still a flesh. And so people have to understand you might have a great message, but you might not be a great leader. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so give your word and sit down and allow somebody else to step up and lead those other ministries. Wow. Allow those people to lead the, the community, the community focus, so read, lead the children's church, lead the, the, the drive that you want to have. Mm -hmm. You know, humble yourself in, in that point because leadership is hard because you have to manage personalities. Come on, because church, <laughs> church, yeah, yeah. Although you operate in the spirit, personalities show up. So That's somebody right. might be offended that the children choir is singing old spirituals, and then somebody might be offended that they're singing this new stuff that they feel is secular. Mm -hmm. And you got to manage personalities, and you're missing the spirit. But as a leader, you got to have patience, Amen. and you got to put people in place. You got some people that join the church and get mad. They don't, you know, they don't have any connectivity with the church, but mad because the pastor or the leaders don't even speak to them. Well, you don't even show up for them to actually speak to. Like, so you got to have people in place. How do you reach out to your new members? How do you get them involved? You know, because there is a leadership part that goes into it. There's a people aspect that goes into that. So I would tell this to the people that's discouraged. Again, when you go to church, you're not going there for the people. People are people. You go, you go in there. You go in there for God. You go in there for God and you fellowship with people. Now, personalities might not mix. And I'm going to tell you right now, I know I ain't going to no church. If I got to go to the altar and hold some rattlesnakes and do all that stuff, I'm not. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Test my faith some other way. <laughs> I ain't down with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, but that might, that might work for somebody, somebody else. Somebody might want to get Easter clean every Sunday. That mm -hmm. might work for you. Cool. Then you Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You find your fellowship. Again, you find Amen. your fellowship, but don't miss God. Because you're too busy trying to entertain people. That's right. and, and God is trying to talk to you. And mm -hmm. he's trying to get you to listen. And what I learned, man, and most people, uh, my brother Pippin, he, he knows the story. I shared this, is that I attempted in 2011 to commit suicide, one of my lowest points in life. And um, I thank God so much for sparing my life and saving mm -hmm. me on that day. Because that day I realized there was a spiritual battle. And um, I was telling my wife this story. I said, the day that I heard God's voice, I almost heard the enemy flee. I heard him laugh. Mm. And I said, because I acknowledge God's presence, he had to flee at the sound of me even saying his name. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, God, what is going on? I let him in. The enemy couldn't even stand in the same room when God enters. You know what I mean? And so I tell people is that what I understood, if God was standing on the opposite side of the room and he was talking to me, I couldn't hear a word he was saying. I heard all the other conversations. Man. And if you if you are in the cafeteria and you know somebody talking on the other side, you can see their lips moving, but you don't know what they're saying. But mm -hmm. if you focus enough and you get a little closer, you won't hear the noise that's going around. You will hear what that person is actually saying. And that's what God is doing every single day when he's talking to us. He's just saying, are you willing to drown out the noise around you? Because I'm going to keep talking to you. And sometimes we so focus on the enemy's distraction that we're not looking at God's blessing. And the God is like, bro, I'm I'm right here and you too busy worrying about what they're doing. Can you focus enough? Can you focus enough? Just like when I play basketball, if you're going to dunk it, put the ball in the rim, why are you looking at the dude that's trying to block it? Yeah. Because the ball is going to go towards his hand and you don't even realize it. That's you're right. going to miss the rim. No, focus on where you're trying to go. Focus on what you're trying to get to because that's where God is going to leave you. So I tell everybody, man, we the church is not going to die because God ain't dead. We, we serve right. a living God.
the church. Now, the organization, the building may may crumble, but we've seen that in the Bible where it took place too. But guess what? The church still, it still comes back. And so, man, you motivate and you have a relationship because God right now is wanting to have a relationship with somebody. And I hope this conversation is the start of it for you. And it's cool. He said he's meeting you where you are right now. But he, he's not asking you to be perfect. He's just asking you to open your mouth. Mm, yes, Faith sir. of a mustard seed. He ain't even telling you to say much. I told somebody the other day, they said, bro, I don't even know how to pray. I said, how good God is. Sometimes you could just moan. I said, you got a wife or you got a friend that can look at your face and tell what you're about to say before you say it. I said, you don't think God had the same power? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just meditate on his goodness and I can't find the words, but I know if he sees my spirit, he's like, I got you, son. You ain't even got to say a yeah. word. Just the meditation yeah. alone. And so the enemy don't even want you to meditate. I used to laugh and I used to meditate on God. I fall asleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I would get up and try to meditate and I go like, oh man, I can't even read the Bible. I get sleepy every time, just a distraction. Then I get up and say, God, I'm going to wake up and focus back on you. I challenge myself before I get on Facebook and Instagram, I get on my Bible app every morning. The first app I'm opening up is the Bible. I'm going to feed myself the word. I'm going to feed yes, myself sir. the word. And then I start realizing that the word would be with me everywhere I go. Then I was able to start spitting some stuff back because then when I talk to the devil, it's like, hey, bro, you coming after me, but by scripture, you took this L, take that. Mm -hmm. take that you know what I mean and I can speak life over myself so now I got a prescription and I tell my young people tell your kids the Bible ain't nothing but like man that ain't nothing but Facebook it is that is the King James Facebook and you go to everybody's feed and you read what's going on for that day that's how mm -hmm. I look at it I look at it like Instagram or social media I go and follow certain people and see how many what they got going on and they putting their business all on there so i can read it and see what they overcome and when i read that bible man that bible's like a cell phone to me i open it up and it's like a text message and god is telling me you can overcome this Amen. you can get through this and that's how i have that relatability relatability because that's the other thing i think that we're missing the gap of how to relate to people and make it make sense to them Amen. you know what i mean times change bro time has changed we grew up in a church where in the black community, man, going to church was the only place people had position. Mm -hmm. We lived in a society where they didn't even have a title. They was worth nothing until they went to church. They was able to be treated like a man or treated like a woman, be able to dress up, be able to stand on their feet, put on nice uniforms because they had to work on their hands and knees and be called less than a person. That's why the church sometimes meant so much to people when they dressed up. But we live in a time now where I put some people dress up all week and on the weekends, they just want to wear some sweatpants. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They yes, have a degree. We have a position and we got to evolve with the times. I joke with my brother and I go, I know God is all he God can do all things. But I said Jesus died at his time because if he came and tried to be crucified in these times, it would have been a crucifixion challenge on Facebook. It would have been so many people trying to mock him and be like, oh, crucifixion challenge. And people would try to mock it and people would try to do it. So we got to evolve in our times and understand that, you know, the next time he coming back, he coming to get us. He trying to get the people that believe and the rapture shouldn't be a place of scary. It should be a reward. So when I look for the rapture, it's like, hey, man, he throwing a cookout, a party on that day. And he telling you right now to go ahead and RSVP. <laughs> you know what yes, I'm sir. Saying? And you can yes, RSVP sir. real quick. So yes, we... Sir. We've, we've, we've gone over a little bit and we're going to have to get everybody back together when we're going to do this second and fourth Tuesdays. And what I want to do right now, I think it's the perfect seg segue for what for what was just said. But if, if one of y'all brothers can just explain what salvation is and maybe for someone who might be seeking the Lord, but doesn't know what the next step is, if you can just kind of lead them and explain it a little bit before we come pray and go out. Well, I mean, Bishop Bell been handling business. He's probably tired, but if you want it, Bishop, you got it. If not, I got it. One, one of y'all. Go ahead, Pastor Bishop. That's good. I mean, it's it's basically, it's a decision. That's all salvation is. Initially, is a decision. In the next sixty seconds, you can make the greatest decision of your life, or you can continue to stay where you are in mediocrity, in misery in uh unfulfillment uh because in salvation you find all of the, the, these opposites you are fulfilled you have destiny you have purpose and you discover it under salvation um and i will say salvation is simply simply put lord i made mistakes i've tried it my way 
it ain't working. I had a good time doing what I was doing, mm -hmm. but once I came down off of it, I saw it's not working for me. Yes, sir. Salvation is saying, God, I made mistakes. I've, I've, I've screwed it up. I need your help. Mm -hmm. Help me fix this. Help me fix what I need you to fix what I messed up. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much salvation. God, I'm going to trust you enough to give you my hand, to give you my life, to give you my heart, and I'm going to follow you. Yeah. Salvation is simply saying, I, I believe I believe Jesus died for me. Mm -hmm. I believe it with all my heart. And not only did he die, he rose again. He died for my mess. After he died, he had enough power to get up out of what he died in. He died in my sin. He died because of my sin. But he had enough power to come up out of that as a natural man. Amen. We were able to see, people were able to see him again. People were able to touch the nails in his hand. I believe all that. But God, I believe also that you that you can lead me into that perfect place. Amen. Not only in heaven, but God, you can lead me to that perfect place here on earth. And when I speak of perfection, I speak of what Brother James was talking about earlier. When I have that joy that can't nobody take away from me, that's perfection. When I have peace in the midst of a hellified situation, to me, that's perfection. I, I've reached that point in God where I'm in those abundant blessings now. Amen. Peace, joy, Amen. love. Amen. That's all salvation is, y'all. It's just a decision to say, I'm going to do better, and I'm going to do it with Christ. Amen. So, yeah, so we're going to end on that, and I want to encourage anybody, if y'all are waiting to get right, if y'all are waiting till next week, if y'all are waiting till you get that promotion, if y'all are waiting till you don't take that drink, now's your time, man. Now's the moment. Yes. All you got to do is say, God, save me. That's it. Yes. Just like Pastor Pipkin said, it's as simple as just saying no to the devil. And, and Brother Jamie said it. When he said no, the devil ran. He, he, is a, he is a dog on a leash. God has the devil on a leash. Don't be afraid of Satan. Satan has no power to do anything but what you let him do. So my encouragement to you is take control back of that leash, give it back to God and say, uh-uh, Satan doesn't have anything on me. And I promise you, if you give your life to him today, Father God, in Jesus name, Lord, we just say thank you, Lord, for each and every person who in their heart is, is seeking you, but doesn't quite know how to do it. Lord, we just ask that they say help. I surrender. I submit. And I know that you can fix everything I'm going through because you are the way. And I know that you care enough that you will fix everything I'm going through. And if you can do that, Father God, I know I'll be healed. If you can just pray that prayer, just as simple as that, if you could just pray that prayer, God, help me, God, save me, and I know you will. If you can do that, that's the beginning of a life that will change. It ain't going to be perfect. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to have some worse days because now the enemy's got you on notice. Now the enemy knows that you're a real threat because you're in the kingdom. You're on the good team now. So when you're on the good team, everyone's chasing you. You know, the... But when you're but now that you're a factor and a game changer, God is going to do more. That's There's right. more waiting for you. So I just ask you all that if, if you've accepted the Lord today, if you're one of those people, give one of us a call. And if you need some someone to just talk to you, if you need you've got questions you want to ask, you can you can go on Faith Connections or you can go to Restoration of Praise. You can go to Brother Jamie. You can come to us and just ask us what it what it did for us. And we're here to listen and we're here to pray with you. But I encourage everybody tonight, I encourage every single person tonight to find a Bible-based church. Yes. Find a place where you and God can connect. You ain't got to know every scripture. All you got to know that he died for you. If you know that he died for you and he rose for you, he didn't do it so that you could fail. He didn't give up so much for you to fail. He gave up everything so that you can be a victor and a winner and a success. So, Father God, I just pray for everybody on tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the esteemed speakers that you blessed us with. I thank you, God, for their hearts. I thank you for their testimony. Father God, I even thank you for my wife who, who so excellently did a job in the back with, with handling everything, Lord. And we just thank you for the input that she had as well. And for each and every person that had a voice, we thank you for them. Bless us and keep us as we go our separate ways. And we give you the praise. We give you the honor. Father God, we pray, Lord, for these senseless tragedy. We pray for the families of those who are yes, lost Lord. in Texas, those who are lost in Buffalo, those who have been lost around this country and around this world, God. Father God, we know that this world is not getting more wicked. It's just more publicized wickedness. It's been wicked for a long time. Mm. But Father God, now we see it in its, in its ugliest form. So God, we just ask, Lord, for to institute a spirit of change in people. 
And let us be the change that you need to save this world, God. Yes, let us first demonstrate the change that Jesus demonstrated to us. And Lord, we put it all in your hands and trust in you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless y'all. And, and if there's nothing else, we're going to move on out and we'll come check us out in a, in a couple weeks. We'll be back. Yeah, hey, sure. Love you guys. Love hey, y'all. God, God bless, bless, man. Love y'all. Thank y'all so much.